Greetings Zimbabwe, my name is Sean Moyo. Welcome once more to our program, Power Talk. In today's program, we are graced by Madam um, Elizabeth Valerio. She is the president of USA, uh, correct? USA. USA. United Zimbabwe Alliance, and she's one of the candidates running for president. So we are here to speak to her and hear what she has to offer and propose to Zimbabweans and also basically get to know a bit about her. Madam, welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Sean. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, Mima. Getting straight into it, may you please tell the nation who uh, Elizabeth Valerio is? Well, first and foremost, I'm a Zimbabwean, a concerned Zimbabwean, someone who's very worried about the future of our country, um, where we are going as a nation. Um, I have lived for the last decade in Wange, um, mostly because I'm a conservationist. I work right. in the tourism um, industry, mm -hmm. and I've been living very close to Wange National Park. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of background, I'm a scientist. Okay. Um, I have a number of companies that I've owned, that I own, and that I've invested in right. here in Zimbabwe. Um, and I think the biggest role that I have right now is that I am the president of the United Zimbabwe Alliance, right. a political party that's 26 months old. We were formed on 29 May 2021. Mm -hmm. Uh, tell us a bit more about uh, your political journey. What sure. exactly uh, brought uh, this, uh, what ignited the flame of, uh, of politics in you? For me it was um, because I live in a, in a conservation area, um, I rely very heavily on tourism and um, the whole region pretty much where I live in Wangi, mm -hmm. we rely on tourism. Um, there was a proposal or actually there was a, a a decision made by the government, by the current president, uh, to um, open up the national park, Wange yes. National Park, yes. to coal mining. Yes. Um, and that was in 2020. Mm -hmm. I was very concerned about this because this was going to impact not only the park itself, tourism, mm -hmm. but also jobs. It was going to affect, you know, a very vital resource that we have in our country. Right. So I started a, a campaign with others in our region mm -hmm. uh, to try to convince the government to do the right thing and stop mining or prevent mining in Wange National Park. And fortunately, the government did listen mm -hmm. and they reversed their position uh, but very soon after that I was being contacted by people from all over Zimbabwe saying you know you know on our land um, ancestral grave sites were now at threat um, shrines that belong to people who for decades and I mean generations have lived in some of these areas were being told they had to move but the main reason was for foreigners to be able to come and exploit our land. So I became very concerned about that. Right. I started um, contacting people. We had a meeting and invited a, a number of people to a discussion to try to figure out how do we take back Zimbabwe for Zimbabweans and uh, try to pressure the government to do the right thing. Sitting around the table with the individuals that came to this meeting, uh, we all quickly realized that the problems are even bigger than protecting our land for Zimbabweans. Um, the issues were many. Right. in Zimbabwe that needed to be addressed. And so we left that meeting after two days of essentially deliberating, discussing, debating. Wow. We left that meeting with uh, a decision to form a new political party, which is the United Zimbabwe Alliance. I was elected president of the party. Great, uh, and congratulations. And Thank also, you. I would want to congratulate you on your winning the, the court case. Uh, when yes. initially you had been barred uh, from standing uh, for your party yes. and then eventually you went to court and you won. May you mm -hmm. please, uh, in a nutshell, uh, give us a view sure. of uh, the justice system uh, yeah. also in relation to your victory in this particular case. Yeah. In that case, I mean, it was for me very surprising because as a political party we've been working towards elections and we did everything necessary to prepare for the election. Um, and so I had all my paperwork in order, we went to court, we had the payment ready and then when I went into court I was told that my paper work was approved but the payment was not accepted right so we went into court um, expecting for me to be on the ballot and instead not only me but uh, almost uh, you know 50 more than 50 percent of our candidates were rejected okay. so we ended up now having to go through the court system mm -hmm. I filed an appeal um, it didn't uh, you know it wasn't responded to quickly mm -hmm. but in the end um, justice prevailed and we were able to finally get a ruling from a judge who said that I should be added to the ballot that um, you know essentially Zek had uh, to correct the mistake that they had made on June 21st I've lost a lot of time because now we're going to elections and I've only got less than a month right, to campaign right. um, because days, I think. yes and we've been in in court battles for the last several weeks we've been fighting for the right to represent Zimbabwe 
Um, so it's been a very challenging experience for me, but um, I'm thankful that the judicial system did work um, essentially for this particular citizen. So what's your conclusion about the, the, the judicial system? Would you say overall it's, uh, it's, it's independent and it, uh, it works proficiently or maybe in some cases yeah, yeah. I, look, I don't know. Um, I've heard so much. We, we, we see the stories every day of, of the unfair, um, you know, rulings that individuals are getting. You have people who get, uh, you know, imprisoned or put in jail for extended periods of time. I mean, we've got Job Sikala right now, you know, wallowing in, in, in prison and he should be participating actively in this election. Right. Um, so it's, it's you know, I've, I've heard so much from different voices throughout Zimbabwe and we're very concerned. Um, mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I think what we need to do is restore you know the, the the rule of law in our country that mm -hmm. is my mission that's what I'm focusing on as a political leader and trying to find a way to ensure that in the future there is no politicization um, <laughs> at the end of the day I don't know the real reasons why Zek would have rejected my application right. um, but we were at least able to go to the courts and, and I'm thankful that uh, we were heard perfect and uh, if I may uh, briefly come back to your political party yes. why form a party why not join say the Zanu PF has been there for a long time. Mm -hmm. Then there's a uh, Triple C, mm -hmm. and uh, there's the MDC. Why not join the established parties? Why form a new party altogether? We have our own outlook in terms of what we want right. to see in Zimbabwe. So ZANU PF has been there. It's been there for 43 years. We are seeing no progress in terms of the country and where we want Zimbabwe to be. Um, mm -hmm. I wasn't the one who decided ultimately it was a group of us, citizens right. from across Zimbabwe. Um, when we were formed, it was before there was a triple C, it was actually MDC, which is now split into triple C. Right, um, right. And so what we decided as a group of citizens was that after decades, these parties had not brought forward they had not delivered on the promises that they've been making to Zimbabweans all these years. And so we sat around a table with people who were formerly from Triple C, some of them even from ZANU PF, and we formed a party that was bringing together two separate political parties, bringing it to be one. Right. And this is what we are. We are one political party. We are saying let's unite as we build Zimbabwe. So. The United Zimbabwe Alliance is a new political party, but we are the third largest, as far as I've been told from the statistics or the data, um, we are the third largest. If you look at the ballot, we have candidates in 61 constituencies. Wow. We are going to be the next government of Zimbabwe. We would have had many more, but many of our candidates were rejected by ZEC. Those who are on the ballot are ready and willing to serve the citizens. Right. Uh, you spoke about uh, the, the current parties or the established parties not being able to deliver on their promises. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a very, very key area, but um, how or why should Zimbabweans trust that you will uh, deliver? Uh, at the moment, obviously, it's mainly your word or your party's word, sure. um, uh, which may not necessarily be backed by any form of delivery since you haven't been uh, in, in politics. Mm -hmm. So why should Zimbabweans trust your word that you will deliver? As, a, as an individual, I've already delivered um, you know, advancement for our nation. I was one of the first to bring STEM education to our country. Mm -hmm. I'm very serious about education. Um, I have the background and the, cap the capability to understand the difference between a poor educational system and inadequately run educational system and a good one. Um, from a business standpoint, I've created jobs in this country. I'm also in the process right now of spearheading an initiative that will create 30 companies, supporting entrepreneurs in our country, creating jobs. But more important than that, our political party is the first political party to truly put citizens at the center. The, so the solutions for our country shouldn't come from one person. It's not about me. It's about us, Zimbabweans, coming together and finding solutions that will actually move our nation forward. So there are people around the world who have answers. They've left our country. They're building other countries. Right, They're right. even building other companies. Right. You know, why shouldn't they be sitting at the table helping to advise right. the incoming government and shaping a much better future for our Zimbabweans? So we have at the core of our ideology, citizens' engagement, the citizens will help us to rebuild this country. And as a person who is committed to bringing together all Zimbabweans, regardless of their background, I'm the most qualified. Perfect. Um, maybe let's hear a bit about uh, your manifesto. Have you put out a manifesto out yes. to the public? 
and also if you may give us a few highlights of what it actually details. Sure. Yes. So it's broken up into four sections. Mm -hmm. The first is um, all around accountability, right. and so that's focusing on things like the rule of law, um, making sure that we have separation of powers, mm -hmm. getting rid of corruption. That is really the highlight of the you know, the accountability piece. We want a government that's accountable as well to the right. people. Uh, we also are looking at advancement, economic development. We want to make sure that our nation has a currency of its own, a stable uh, fiscal policy that we're actually developing as a, a world leader because we really have the resources and capacity to right. do that. Um, but in terms of advancement, education, skills, training, all of these things are very vital and important. Um, as you move along, you've got to start looking at the stability of our country. Right. How do we stabilize our nation? Um, and the first way to do that, of course, you need to restore the pride and dignity of the people. Um, you know, we've got people who've worked their whole lives, they're living in, 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 in poverty in rural areas, they've been forgotten about. Our pensioners are not even getting pensions right now. So we've got to restore our dignity as a people so that we're able to, you know, really bring our nation forward. Um, we have to look at um, public service. Uh, what are we going to do to make sure that we serve the citizens, the civil servants? The civil servants today are struggling to survive. How can you expect people to run the country if they can't even feed their own families, they can't put their own children in school? And then finally, the, you know, to the, the other element of our stability piece yes. is making sure that we, um, we ultimately have infrastructure in place a transportation system we can rely on. You should right. be able to get on a bus and not have to queue with five, you know, hundred other people just to get on a bus that ends up being unsafe. We need right. our roads to be in order. We need to make sure that at the end of the day we have a good rapport with the world community and that requires re-engagement. We need to engage the IMF. We need to make sure that we get rid of sh sanctions. We've got a lot of work to do. Um, so we have a comprehensive manifesto. It encompasses all aspects of what we as Zimbabweans need to do to rebuild our country. Right. Uh, I'll touch on the sanctions a bit a bit. So you actually acknowledge that there are sanctions that are imposed on Zimbabwe. So there is a lot of, um, you know, uh, it, what do I say, propaganda around sanctions, if you ask me. Right. Ultimately, there are sanctions. Most of them, you know, really don't impact our economy. But, you know, if you look at the history of Zimbabwe, even in the 1960s, there were mm -hmm. sanctions on Rhodesia, sure. but Zimbabwe was thriving. Sure. Um, so we do have sanctions, and we don't want any form of sanctions on our nation. We right. need to re-engage and have a good relationship with the global community. Mm -hmm. And so what that means is we need to look at the causes for these sanctions. Right. Um, but also we need to re-engage. We need to get rid of our debt. The main reason we have sanctions is because we don't pay our bills, right. ultimately. Um, so let's look at what do we need to do to get rid of the you know the, the the debts that we have and restore ourselves as a um, you know a viable you know uh, global uh, in, yeah, you know yeah. nation a nation within this global um, community right and um, now going on to the economy which mm -hmm. is probably the most important thing that uh, concerns a lot of Zimbabweans on the 23rd of August you are elected president uh, as you would wish and as you are contesting mm -hmm. what is the one thing that you're going to do First off, to, 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 to stop this uh, ravaging inflation and also restore the economy. Because uh, why I'm asking that, a lot of politicians tend, gen tend to sort of uh, generalize sure. or just uh, speak in glowing terms but without giving sufficient detail mm -hmm. as to what they are going to do. So you are in office mm -hmm. on the, um, in, in September after the inauguration. Yes. What steps precisely are you going to take that you say, I'm going to do this, this and that to solve the inflation? and to fix the economy even in the short term. Sure. Yeah. Um, unfortunately for Zimbabwe, we are currently working primarily with a foreign you know, currency. We don't right. have a stable currency. And so you've got to start looking. It's not going to be an overnight uh, correction. Right. But I think the mere fact that I would become president of Zimbabwe will give confidence to those who want to invest in our country that they can re-engage because currently there isn't a lot of confidence in the current government. Mm -hmm. I will ensure that we have a cabinet that is credible, that is inclusive, that is diverse, that represents the skill sets we need to be able to lead this nation responsibly. So part of it is just a matter of confidence. People right. don't have confidence in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. Our own people outside of this country will not invest in our country because of the instability, the inconsistencies in terms of our policies. So that in itself will already start to stabilize our nation. I'm not trying to be general. Um, but we also, because we are operating on the US dollar, we'll have to continue to use it for a while. Right. But it, it, it strikes me that you know Zimbabwe's biggest trading partner is actually South Africa. Why are we not using the Rand more? Um, it really doesn't, you know, 
we don't need permission to use the RAND, but right. that's our biggest trading partner. So we need to look at these sorts of fiscal elements, mm -hmm. um, and that's going to come from, from the financial experts. We're going right. to bring the best people to the table to make right. sure they start putting in place measures to, to stabilize. But if you really look at um, just the, the bigger picture, yes. how can you have a country with a stable economy and low inflation if more of what you are um, surviving on, on a daily basis, is imported than exported? So it's these simple fundamental things. We need to get back to basics. We need homegrown innovation. We need to produce our own right. products. We need a, re a revitalized dairy you know, industry. Um, all of the things that we know we are capable of doing need to be put back in the hands of the entrepreneur. We need business leaders to be at the table right. shaping the agenda for re-engagement. So it's not about a, a simple overnight fix. It's about all of us getting involved, rolling up our sleeves and working to rebuild this nation. Right. And obviously any and every political party that is serious has got a fundamental economic policy. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll give you an example. Um, at the turn of the millennium, ZANU-PF was running on agricultural revolution and the land is the economy mm -hmm. and the economy is land. So I cannot comment on, 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 on um, the implementation part, mm -hmm. but on being clear, it seemed they had a clear uh, policy. Sure. And then also uh, recently, Seve Kasukwere spoke about uh, empowerment. Basically, he used to be the youth minister and he was part of making these, uh, these, uh, these uh, uh, policies. Mm -hmm. So he seems also to be a bit clear on what exactly he wants to do with the economy. So mm -hmm. I would want to know Uza's own fundamental uh, common denominator economic policy. Yeah. So I really believe that um, it's not just an economic policy. As I've said, it's all about taking back Zimbabwe for Zimbabweans. Right. And so that is really at the, that's the thread we are running with is right. we are taking back Zimbabwe for Zimbabweans because for the first time we will have a government where everyone has a role to play. You cannot rebuild this economy with uh, just government being, uh, you know, the one to, to lead the, right, the, the right. economic revitalization of our nation. It's not going to happen. We need every Zimbabwean to be part of this equation. So that's why we always say let's unite as we build Zimbabwe. Every Zimbabwean has to have a role to play in this economic plan. Right. And uh, my next question uh, concerns basically uh, the behavior of the Zimbabwean electorate. Mm -hmm. It would seem from history that uh, it's not always welcoming to, 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 to new players. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of uh, voters tend to uh, stay with uh, the established players, as it were. Yes. So yes. how are you going to make sure that uh, your party is acceptable to this uh, conservative uh, um, um, population. Yes. No, we are a very different political party and oftentimes, you know, when you first engage with people, they may not fully understand what we're about. Um, but I think because we've done the work, we've been across the country, we've met the people face to face, we've right. had conversations, people are starting to know us. Um, so, you know, ultimately, it's conversations like this, making sure people can actually hear what we are about um, and making sure that we are in every constituency represented by people from within the constituencies themselves. So UZA is not a um, political party that's focusing on just one area. We right. are not segregating. Right. We are saying every citizen you know, you know. Right. Um, but, but at the end of the day, I'm Please don't say that. I'm not the new Grace Mugabe. I'm Elizabeth Valerio. Right. And ultimately, um, people have come to realize that men have been leading our nation for all these years. Mm -hmm. I represent a very different outlook, a different lens. Right. And so we want to make sure that, first of all, the women are are, are you know are sitting at the table. They are equally represented. Yes. We're yes. working hard. In fact. Uza has the most women in terms of our proportions of women who are on the ballot than okay. any other political party on the ballot this wow. year. We're proud right. of that and we are going to continue to make strides to do even more. Um, but we ultimately want women at the fore, men, youth should all be represented. We want to make sure every citizen right. um, understands and, and really is engaged in, in what we are working on as a yes. party. And speaking about our women participation, um, politics can be a rough spot uh, mm -hmm. It's a contact spot. Yes. So a lot of times, some women may not necessarily have uh, uh, the muscle, as in uh, mm -hmm. probably psychological muscle, to handle the pressure. Yes. How are you coping with uh, with the pressure? Well, you, you you alluded to it when you first talked about how when you come into the political space, automatically you are attacked, even by others in opposition. Right. It was hard for me to understand that because we're all working towards bringing Zimbabwe for yes. forward. We need a political you know, an environment where every party has a voice. We bring our ideas, we share ide ideas, and then we 
basically look at how to build the nation together. But instead, people attack you. Worse, when you are a woman, you're attacked for ridiculous reasons. Um, you know, I don't know my place in society, this sort of thing. But where are we supposed to be? If women's issues are not being addressed by the current government, we need to make sure that we are, we are represented at the highest offices. And so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we can change our mentality as Zimbabweans. Just because I'm not representing another political party doesn't mean that we don't have commonalities and things that we both want to see for Zimbabwe. So I always say, I'm always open to talking. We need to have conversations about how to work together, particularly in opposition, to strengthen our position. Right. Um, uh, talking about that uh, dialogue, do you have any form of uh, communication with, say, the ruling party? And, um, and in Triple C, which seems to be the main opposition at the moment, mm -hmm. and also your party. I mean, is there any form of communication that you've initiated? Um, we, we, um, so I've participated in events, and of course we have uh, representatives from other opposition parties that I've met through that platform. Yes. I've not had any uh, you know, engagement with ZANU-PF. Um, we're trying to get ZANU-PF out of government. <laughs> Uh, but I think ultimately it's the it's the other opposition parties that we should be speaking with and I have been fortunate enough uh, to have other political leaders reaching across and saying can we talk right. in fact some are even joining us right. uh, independents are joining us uh, other political parties who feel they don't have the capacity are seeing what we stand for and they're actually even becoming part of UZA so we're talking you know we are talking I think everyone has a different objective at the end of the day we all want to see Zimbabwe from a different lens right. um, but it's good to have conversations right and uh, you spoke about uh, the number of your candidates that are um, um, uh, across the country you said you had uh, six was it 61? We are in 61 constituencies right. out of 210 and right. then we have um, you know 31 MPs currently like I said most of them were rejected by ZEC but we have right. 31 in different constituencies and then we have uh, also our councillors at the, representing their various wards. Right so with uh, this I say um, uh, all things being equal uh, your MP candidates win the House of Hundreds of Seeds mm -hmm. so you have 31 MPs out of uh, 210 Yes. and uh, for you to to rule effectively, you mm -hmm. would need a parliament that is uh, supportive of you. Sure. And uh, mm -hmm. so how are you going to work in the event that you win all those constituencies that you're contesting in, mm -hmm. and you win the presidency, yes. but you don't control parliament, how uh, are you going to move forward there? I, I think um, as representatives of parliament, their job is to represent the citizens. I am a, president, a presidential candidate that will be selected by the people, by the citizens of Zimbabwe, right. and therefore we should be able to work together. I will certainly do everything I can to make sure that we are united as a government, right. regardless you know, which political party in Anyone represents. I'm not here to, uh, you know, segregate and and separate the people in Parliament. We should be working together to building this nation. Right. Um, and so I would just remind everyone that is on the ballot right now, looking to represent the citizens. The role they play is to listen to the citizens. Right. If they select me as president, surely we can work together. Right. And um, I have a few more questions uh, to go before we close. Sure. Uh, one of the main ones is the contentious issue of Kukuraundi mm -hmm. that happened in Matabeleland. Um, as a party and as a leader, uh, if you were to get into government, how are you going to address that uh, situation? It's a, it's a shameful part of our history. It's something which should have been addressed and resolved years back. I don't think you can ever really fully resolve it. Right. So many people were affected and um, you know, it's, I've personally met people whose families went through Gukuraunde and it's, you, know, you can see the, the, the pain and, and the, the struggle that people have, you right. know, having been forgotten about for so many years, struggling to even get IDs, some of these things, I mean, and the victimization that they're you know, their relatives went through. Some are even still maimed today and suffering. Mm -hmm. So with Gukuraundi, I don't have an answer for Gukuraundi. Neither do the people who currently are being called to the table, our traditional leaders. They don't have an answer. They were not part of that. Mm -hmm. And it's not their responsibility to solve Gukuraundi, in my view. We need to sit down. The people who are affected by Gukuraundi need to come up with the solutions. and. Ultimately, as government, our role will be to support that process, to help them, whether it's by restoring or rectifying the, the deficits that they have, you know, through, you know, programs that can make them, you'll never be able to make them whole again, True. but at least True. make life a little bit better for those affected. And we need to acknowledge that it happened, right. because ultimately, um, 
you can't continue to make excuses. This happened. It's a, Mugabe said it was a, a moment of madness in the history of Zimbabwe. I want to build a new nation that has everybody sitting at the table. We need different ideas, diverse outlooks, and that's going to require including every citizen. Those affected by Gukura Hundi are an important part of that as well. Right. Um, let's just say uh, at the end of the elections, you have not won as you would have wanted to. Are you going to carry on uh, in politics or perhaps you're going to get back into business and just you know mind your own uh, <laughs> personal business? Our political party is the next government of Zimbabwe so we are paving the way for that. We continue to work every single day. I haven't stopped from the day Uza was formed right. working every single day to make sure we have a new government for Zimbabwe and so the work will continue as it has for the last two years. Um, as I said we are actually already uh, working intentionally to rebuild our country um, so the, there are programs and, and projects that we're working on. Right. These 30 companies will then be developed to create more opportunities for Zimbabweans. Right. Um, we said we were going to be the first political party to build Zimbabwe even before we are in government. Imagine what we can do if we actually are given the opportunity and the mandate by the citizens to lead this nation. Right. Uh, two more questions, uh, Madam President. Um, firstly, your perception of the current political climate in the campaign periods. Yeah. Um, I think a lot could have been done better um, in preparation for this election. I know there, there has been a tremendous amount of misinformation. Right. The delimitation process caused a lot of confusion. Right. Um, so there's a lot that could have been done better by the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission. I think the responsibility of the Electoral Commission and of course um, of everyone in Zimbabwe is to make sure that we go to this election giving the citizens the opportunity to choose you know, without fear or intimidation, the leaders that they want. And so I just uh, appeal to everyone for peace, uh, to make sure that we have a free, fair and you know, credible election. I'm thankful that um, you know, we are hearing that there are a lot of people coming in as observers. Right. Um, we do want that. We want them to be able to help to ensure that they are observing and holding accountable those that should be providing this, this climate uh, that is free. Uh, I want to see a Zimbabwe where people are celebrating the, the right to be able to choose leaders. I'm not seeing that excitement on the ground. Right. You know, people are in some places even still being intimidated. Our own candidates are being told and we need to see See that come to an end. We need people to be able to free, to be free to to wear their T-shirts, to walk in the streets, and to represent the leaders that they want to represent. So I just hope and and pray uh, that ultimately Zimbabwe. You know, we must remember we are all Zimbabweans at the end of the day. Let's allow each other to you know to 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 practice the the right we were given by those who fought in independence to give us that right to choose our leaders and to be able to vote in this election. Right. And uh, coming to my second last question, um, I've asked this question to basically every opposition um, uh, candidate I've uh, spoken to. Okay. I've uh, spoken to Douglas Monzora. I've asked him this question. Mm. Gender IBT, the same question. Mm. And uh, now to you, Madam President. The current government came to power on the back of uh, basically what's been described as a coup in uh, 2017. Mm. And uh, it being uh, a product of a coup, uh, do you think that in the event of your win or any other opposition win, they would hand over power to you um, just like that? Yeah. Um, we were all very optimistic in 2017. We thought Zimbabwe was moving forward at last and we all rallied behind the current leadership um, with a lot of optimism. And I think a lot of Zimbabweans are coming to realize that it was just the same political leaders over again. And we need to open our eyes and think about what that was for us, what it represented for us. Um, when we finally do have a new president on August 23rd, which will be me, um, I do hope that those who are in the, you know, the security sector will look to the constitution and listen to the voices of the Zimbabwean people. That's what it comes down to. There is a responsibility on the part of you know, the, the, the military, the police, to make sure that we are given the right to choose our leaders. And um, yes, we might not at the end of the day all agree on who that should be, but if the majority chooses me as president, then I would expect the security sector to also honor that and to respect the constitution of Zimbabwe. Right. My final question, uh, Madam President, is um, Zimbabwe is bigger than Harare in Bulawayo and Gweru. Yes. So has Uza uh, been made visible 30 days before the elections to mm -hmm. people in Binga, in Manipati, Chimani Mani, mm -hmm. 
Dotito, because that is where the majority of voters are. So, mm -hmm. do people uh, in those areas know you in Deep Bridge, Chamnangana? Do they know you mm -hmm. and do they know Uza? We are in every corner of Zimbabwe and we, we have been campaigning for 26 months. Tinema structures, we are literally established in every province in this country. Um, I live in Matebelela North, Sagaku Binga, I've been there. I've right. spent my time on the ground in Binga. Right. Kumguza, we are campaigning, we've got candidates. Kumat South, we are there. Um, we are a, a, a political party that is completely committed to making sure everyone is part of this uh, sort of change in government right. and ultimately we made sure that we did not exclude anyone in our campaign but as we've got now 30 days I'm going to do everything I can to get to every corner once more uh, to see our, our members to see the voters face to face um, our approach is very different I want to speak to the citizens we will have a vibrant and very very visible uh, political campaign for the next few weeks and it starts off this weekend Perfect. And uh, I understand that on a personal level, Murima Moyo. Yes, ndiri mwana we jira. Ndiri mwana wa kumashingo. Kumo against a mission of Great Zimbabwe. Ndiri right. mwana kwangu. Right. Um, yes, my mother was a Moyo and I, I was born from the... That know, makes you uh, <laughs> a sibling of mine. I'm just wrong. No, I'm um, glad to hear that. Ndiri. And uh, uh, the last bit, Madam President, perhaps if you could address Zimbabweans and basically speak your piece about uh, what Uza is bringing to the table and why they should vote for you. Thank you very much. Um, I think, you know, I am very thankful every, every time I have a chance to speak to Zimbabwean citizens because at the end of the day, unless you know who we are and what we are, you won't know whether or not you can vote for us. Um, sometimes we get involved in politics because of a personality or maybe someone that we've seen that seems exciting. Um, I want to just remind Zimbabweans that you have a very precious vote um, on 23 August. That vote is something that you can use to change the future of Zimbabwe. Look at the history of our country for decades, for, for, for years, more than 20, 30, 40 years. We have been making the same choices, putting the same people in parliament and hoping that they will do something very different. I'm appealing to Zimbabweans this election to turn up to vote in large numbers so that at the end of the day we have a very, very different government. I pledge to do the right thing. If you read our party manifesto, you can see it's a re reflection of what you as Zimbabwe have said you want. And I will do everything in my power to make sure that we honor every single promise within our party manifesto. We will rebuild Zimbabwe, meaning that all of these major companies we've lost, Zisco, whether you think of the railway system, the road systems, all of the things that we need to create a productive and vibrant life for all of you, we will work on that together. Uh, but more importantly, I want you to understand that every single citizen in Zimbabwe matters. You might be someone who's living in the rural areas or maybe you live in town in a high density area and your life is not what you expect to, to, to have. You maybe right now are thinking about where you can go to find a better life. My commitment, my promise to Zimbabwe is that we will create for you a good life, a good life for every Zimbabwean, a very good life where you can count on the basic things such as having three meals a day, being able to know that you can go to a job that pays you well, um, making sure your children within, when they graduate from secondary school or from university actually have a career. Allow me to build 